Hi, I'm going to be reverting back to uh, talking about intervals because I got an interesting question today on YouTube and I tried to answer it as best as I could. I didn't realize at the moment that there was um, a little confusion around the numbers regarding intervals. So we're, we're dealing with two sets of numbers and yes, that can be very confusing. So for this demonstration, I will be using a uh, keyboard Unfortunately, the keyboard makes no tones, but that's okay because we're really using it as a visual map to see distances and to measure distances. So, uh, the example here, I'll give an example. Um, the perfect fourth that I mentioned. If you go up the scale four steps, let's take the key of C. C is the first step, D is the second step, E is the third step, and F is the fourth step. So there's that number four, perfect fourth. However, when you break it down into its uh, interval length, uh, you get one, two and a half steps. So a perfect fourth is two and a half steps, all right? Um, so this word steps might be confusing too because maybe it's referring to the whole steps and half steps or the steps of the scale themselves. So I'll refer to degrees of the scale, okay? Um, now, here I have a piano keyboard. If you don't understand piano, it doesn't matter. Uh, you should pretty much understand this. This note right here is C, and if I go all the way up, I go uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. All right, hang on one second. Uh, that would be the C scale. So you don't even have to mine the black keys. They're not part of the key of C. So don't even think about that. The only way we, the only reason we'll mine the black keys is when we detect a note in between two, two of the white keys. In other words, here I have a, an A and B. Well, you can see I have this note, but right next to it up here is this note and then that note. So this is a note in between denoting that this interval is a whole step. These two notes here is a whole step. Why? Because there's an interval, in, there's a note in between. So if I go to this degree of the scale, and I'm not going to even confuse you with note names, if I go up the scale one, two, three, four, that's considered a perfect fourth. Uh, to answer the questioner's question, I forget his name, it might have been Steve. Um, here's the thing about, you said which to memorize. It's probably more important to memorize the interval name, in other words, the perfect fourth. The reason, um, it doesn't make sense to memorize the, well, that's a whole step, a whole step, a half step, because you could make that analysis anyway once you make a perfect fourth on your uh, instrument of choice. You could, you could count the half steps all the way up to find your way there if you want to do it that way. Okay, but you know, here we have this degree of the scale and this degree of the scale, these two degrees, right? Now, again, if you count up the C scale, you get one, two, three, four, but we get the number two and a half when we're talking about the intervallic measurement uh, between these two notes. Why? Well, we can see here this is a whole step, there's a note in between, so it's a whole step. There's a note in between here, that's a whole step, but there's no note in between here. So if we count whole steps and half steps, we get whole step, whole step, and then half step. That adds up to one, two, and a half. And uh, by virtue of the uh, shape of the scale itself, we'll find, uh, except for one, we'll, we'll find six different perfect fourths. Here's one, here's another one, and if we count it up, scale steps, we go one, two, three, four, a scale steps meaning degrees of the scale. Okay, well, I'm using that word steps for two different things. That is confusing. But we kind of, I mean, it's general, generally acknowledged um, among musicians that you refer to them as scale steps and the intervals as steps too. This is why it's confusing. So uh, I'm going to call this a, w one particular degree of the scale and another particular degree, degree of the scale. And going from this degree to this degree, I get one, two, three, four. All right. But when I count up the intervals, that's a whole step because there's a note in between. That's a half step, so that's one and a half. Then two and a half, and there's my interval right there, the perfect fourth. Perfect fourth is always two and a half steps. All right. Uh, if I go up to the next perfect fourth, that's E up to A. 
and uh, the degrees of the scale are one, two, three, four. We count four degrees of the scale, okay? But, again, if we analyze whole steps and half steps, we're going to come up with two and a half again. We start off, there's a half step here, whole step here, and whole step here. So that's two whole steps and a half steps, two and a half. All right, and so the story goes, it goes on like that. The only interval that doesn't, if you count four steps, one, two, three, four, this is the only one that doesn't add up to two and a half. This is called um, a uh, augmented fourth because it's a fourth, but it's got more steps than a perfect fourth. In other words, uh, we notice that our perfect fourth had two and one half steps. This has three solid steps, one whole step, two whole steps, three whole steps, okay? Um, that's a very special interval, and it's the only interval when you invert it, you get the same formula, three whole steps, all right? Um, let me see. There also may be a little confusion about, let's take a, let's take a larger interval. What could we do? The minor sixth. Um, one, two, three, uh, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we counted six degrees, and we have a type of sixth, all right? The notes happen to be D to B. Here's D and here's B, all right? Now, if I count up the degree, if, uh, well, we know the degrees are six steps. We have six degrees um, of the scale. So if I count up, I get one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, Wait, where are we going? Um, what was I doing? D to B? One, two, three, four, f one, two, three, four, five, six. D to B. And we want one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. That's not the one I was looking for. That is uh, D to B. I have to look for a, a minor six. Sorry about this. Give me a second here. I have to think. Um, e to C. Yeah, I want to do this one. E to C. All right. From this degree, counting up one, two, three, four, five, six steps. Okay, so we have the number six, E to C, and we count the intervals. So we have one half. This is one half. One and a half. Now we're adding the half to this one whole step. So we have one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four whole steps, all right? But you might be saying four whole steps, but there are half steps in there. The thing is, the means um, by which you get to the end, it doesn't matter, okay? In other words, uh, if I were to go from uh, E to C, counting precise whole steps the whole way through, no half steps at all, I'd still have the same number, okay? What did I say it was? Three whole steps? Let me count up again. Half step, one and a half steps, two and a half steps, three and a half steps, and another half makes four whole steps. Now, observe this. I'm going to do precise whole steps now, which means four whole steps. Here's one whole step. Notice that there's a note in between these two. And then I do another whole step. There's a note in between these two. That's a whole step. And then another whole step, there's a note in between these two. And then finally, another whole step. So I get four whole steps from uh, E to C. And notice I didn't go by the scale in that case, I went by just purely whole steps, counting up. Either way, whatever means gets you to the end is fine. I suggest using the scale and including those little half steps and then adding them together because, uh, well, it's better to know the structure of a scale and how it works. Right there we did the structure of what's called a whole tone scale. That's kind of a high degree of sophistication in music and I wouldn't want to get into that this early in the game. So I hope that helps clarify the two different types of numbers. You have the actual degrees of the scale that you play, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and those, and then you count the little increments in between. C to D is a whole step, E to F is a whole step, uh, I mean, uh, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a whole step, so on and so forth. You'll, you'll wind up with two different sets of numbers. The more important number to remember is the scale degree step. So in other words, major third, minor third, perfect fourth, all those uh, uh, interval names. Those are the really important ones that you should, you should get to know.
After you get to know them, then you could start counting and getting into the details of how far they are. The point of all this is really is to be able to recognize these intervals on your instrument. For example, if I on a guitar know what the shape, the literal shape of a major third is, and I know what the shape of a minor third is, and then I know um, the formula for a major chord is two whole steps, that's a major third, plus a step and a half, that's a minor third. So if I could visually reproduce that on guitar, I have my chord shape and I can either play a chord or an arpeggio, which is the separate notes of the chord played. And that's basically it. I hope that is cl that cleared something up for you. I know this is really difficult material. I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm, I really want people to learn. It's very important to me because I think we're kind of starting to lose our system and reinventing the wheel, which is unnecessary to do. Um, so good luck with this stuff. And uh, you know, if you start to get it, start preaching the gospel to other musicians, you know, like explain to them some of the concepts you understood. And it's always valuable to actually have that kind of interaction with another musician. I, just through conversation alone, when you know theory really well in your head, when you get into a conversation with a musician who knows theories, you can um, talk about concepts that, uh, say for example, I was uh, back in New York, I was talking to a brilliant keyboardist, uh, jazz guy, Gary Dial. I don't know if he's still floating around, I thought I heard him on the radio in the 90s. but. Um, we're sitting there having dinner, and he goes, you know, Misty, when you go, ba, 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 and he goes, you know, if you, if you can end on that E-flat major 7 chord, but it's kind of uh, unconventional, if you play a D over E-flat, that's a really cool tone, and I tried it, I could go home and try it on guitar and test it out and go, oh, I see what he's saying, that's cool. So that's why the languaging is very important, because then you could communicate really cool concepts to each other without needing the instrument and having to show in detail what all these little pieces add up to. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope to move on uh, further into Greek modes. We only skimmed a few uh, little things and I did a lot of guitar stuff on that particular video, but we're gonna go deeper. Understand that the Greek modes is the first music theory and I think of it as the first level of music theory. The second level being the major minor key system and that's the hairball. And finally the third level, the blues, and that's even more of a hairball. You have to understand those earlier basics before you can get to the theory of the blues, which is ironic because blues, when I teach blues, I always say at one and the same time, blues is the simplest music to play. If I play a G blues and I want to improvise, G minor pentatonic all day, it'll sound fine, right? But if you want to get inside the uh, intricate, intricate qualities of the blues, the, the uh, delicate balance between major and minor and how to sinuously move through both major and minor within one chord, it gets extremely sophisticated. So the blues may seem like simple and easy, but and it is, but uh, once you, when you want to expand into the blues, you find out that there's a wealth, there's a whole gold mine of information inside the blues itself, and I'm here to bring that out. Okay, anyway, have a great uh, day, night, morning, whatever it is for you, and talk to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.